Kosi. Ora yes. Show me the conqueror who covers me. Amaya Tshemba. Oh Jesus. What ya why? You are said that in tuntum. Ani aye. It's a wonku to the fatao. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Wayo. Hallelujah. We din kunima. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Oh wayo. Hallelujah. We din kunima. Yes, you are no one for black and come on. And I do so I say, yeah, I'm on. Here I get. Is you I know? One for a hand, 
Friends, this is the University Interdenominational Church UCC. We want to thank you for participating in our broadcast since Monday. It's the Passion Week, the Holy Week. Usually for some of us, we'll be busy going up and down. But God in his own wisdom has permitted this and we have been kept in the house. So we are taking this opportunity to do reflection into our Christian life our salvation and for the entire week the focus has been on the cross we invite you link up with a friend entire family come together as we come to the final part of our Easter's reflection and lift our hearts before God trusting in him who is able to save us you are welcome and we begin with a prayer hallelujah me wafa mudi Hallelujah Me wafa mudi Oh gwama dele boja to Oh, 
Wherever you are, join us and make this declaration that you are free. And we are not free because we have things in essence. We are free because the Lamb of God has laid his life for us. John declared and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He has used his blood to purchase us. And we are special people before God. Father, we bless you and thank you for this evening. We praise you, we honor you for your love that cannot be understood by any man. We do not deserve this love, but you chose to love us and to save us. Today we are alive, and it's because of you. And we know that we are alive because there is a purpose you want us to accomplish. So we avail our hearts to you tonight. Almighty God, speak to us through your word. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, establish your word in our hearts, that all the days of our lives, we will live for you. We will hold the cross in our hand. And we will let the world know that you saved us. In Jesus' name. Amen. This service, Easter Reflection, as we lift our hearts and sing from the Methodist hymn book number 199. We are singing the words the Apostle Paul himself said. And it is about the cross. So we are saying, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There, precious fountain, free to all. A healing stream flow from Calvary's mountain. In the cross be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. So just join us and let us sing from the depths of our heart. He's saying, near the cross, O Lamb of God, 
bring its sins before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows over me. Wow. If God reveals what happened on the cross, your life will change. And you will walk under its shadow. Join me as we sing near the cross, O Lamb of God. the cross. yesterday that the cross is a symbol of hope. Hoping, trusting never till I reach the golden strand just beyond the river. Glory to Jesus. Another opportunity to reflect through his word. And for tonight's reflection, we are looking at Revelations chapter 12. Our main test will be the verse 11, but permit me to read from verse 7 through to verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through to verse 11. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was held down. That ancient serpent called the devil. Or Satan who leads the whole world astray. And please take note of that. Other versions say deceives the whole world. He was held to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, if it's your Bible, please take note and underline. The accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been held down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. They overcame him by the blood 
of the Lamb. And that is the focus of our reflection this evening. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. From Monday, the head pastor led us, and we looked at the cross, a revelation of love. On Tuesday, I had the privilege of coming to your homes and leading you on the cross, an atonement for sin. And on Wednesday, our pastor, Reverend Victor Jabba, also led us looking at the cross, the symbol of hope. This evening, we are looking at the topic, the cross, our victory. The cross, our victory. If you look at the three days prior to today, all that we've been talking about, most of it, or all of them, are telling us what God has done. It's an atonement. It's a revelation of his love. And then he tells us it is the hope. And this evening, what he has asked us to look at, is not just what he has done, but what you and I are supposed to rise up and do. With all that he's done for us as Christians, the cross is a symbol of hope. The symbol of the atoning grace is the symbol of the love of God. But you and I have a responsibility, a duty, an action we are supposed to rise up and take. And we are taking this action based on what happened in heaven that Revelation has revealed to us that there was war in heaven. And this war, the one who fought and led was Michael, the archangel. But before we go deep into it and take the aspects that I'm interested in for us to reflect on this evening, I want us to just reflect on what we have learned over the days. It is the love of God. Whilst we were yet sinners, Christ came to die for us. We have learned that he was made a sin, that we may become the righteousness of God. That was the work of atonement. And we were told that just as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, and the people looked up, and they were spared from death. Anybody who lifts his eye up and puts his hope in Jesus Christ will also be saved. And we have learned so many things. Amongst them is that when we talk about the cross, I remember Pastor Victor sharing with us and telling us that Jesus was not the first person to have died on the cross. As a matter of fact, when we celebrate Christmas, we know that even on that day, there were two other people who died with him on the cross. But it is his alone. It is his alone because of who he is and what he came to accomplish in this world. Proud to the death of Christ, he being hanged on the cross to die for us. We learned that the cross was a symbol of shame. It was a scorn. It was a symbol of suffering. It was a symbol of defeat. But tonight we are saying the cross, our victory. And yet it is impossible to read in the New Testament without being stuck by the atmosphere of joyful confidence that pervades it. There was no defeatism in the early Christian. They knew victory. They knew conquest. They knew triumph. They knew overcoming. Because they had worked with Christ and they had known that he is a conquering king. And he has conquered because of the work he did on the cross. When we go through the passage we have for today, it is mentioned Two characteristics of the devil. He says, he has deceived the whole world. He has misled the whole world. His greatest weapon is deception. 
He even wants to deceive you for you to think that after confessing that you are a sinner and that Jesus will come and stay in you, he will tell you that it is not enough. He's somebody who deceives. But today we are here talking about victory. The enemy wanted to deceive the whole world. And he succeeded in deceiving mankind to do that which was evil. And the second attribute of the devil that was mentioned was that he is the accuser of the brethren. You see, he will come and deceive you. He will lure you into sin. And when you have, this, you have, you have sinned against God, that same devil will come and accuse you. He will bring to your memory every day. Do you remember five years ago what you did? Do you remember the kind of person you are? In fact, do you remember the family you come from? What is good about you? He will go before God and he will be accusing. Everywhere he is accusing us. But today we are talking about victory. Those who have gone ahead of us, the believers who have conquered, they are people who believed in victory. And they believed that that victory was won on the cross. One of my most favorite hymns in the Methodist hymn book, MHB 831. If you're a Methodist, you know that most of the time you hear this hymn when it is a funeral. But it carries so much message. Give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see. The saints above, how bright their joy. How bright their glories be. Once they were mourners here below and poured out cries and tears, they wrestled hard as we do now with sin and doubt and fear. The saints ahead of us, they went through what we are going through. But the hymnist asks a very beautiful question in his hymn, and it's all based on scripture. And that is the third stanza. He says, I ask them, from whence your victory came? And this is the answer he received. They, with united breath, ascribe their conquest to the Lamb. They are triumph to his death. The triumph to his death. Their conquest is to the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So when we are talking about victory as Christians, our victory is not in an anointing oil or a special water. Our victory is not in anything. But it is in the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed on the cross. So when we talk about the cross, we talk about the blood of Jesus. That is where we have our victory. So the accuser of the brethren rose up against them. He fought against them. And the Bible tells us they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You and I as Christians, having been saved and made the righteousness of God, we are supposed to rise up and overcome the world. We are supposed to rise up and overcome the devil. We are supposed to rise up and overcome every sin. There be certain sin that easily comes our way. But you cannot do that in your strength. It's only when you look up to the cross, the blood that was shed for you. He said you overcame him by the blood of the lamb. I'm urging you, Christian brother, there is decay all around us. There are many people going about saying things that are contrary to scripture, saying things that are contrary to the will of God. Today, the world is not ashamed to talk about gay and lesbian marriages, things that God hates. But will the church continue to sit down and watch? Will you rise up? Will you rise up and defeat them based on the power we receive from the blood of Jesus? If he has made you his righteousness, it's not just for you to celebrate and enjoy, but it's for you to rise up. The world needs solution to the world's problem. And the people who must rise are Christians. The people who have the name, the people who have the blood, the people who have the authority, we are the Christians. What are you sitting there doing? Today, there are many Christians in missionary business 
we have Christian apologetics who are writing to defend the Christian faith. God put you in that science field, gave you the ability to understand that. And we are talking about victory as Christians. Then the Lord is expecting you to rise up by the blood of the Lamb, by that authority that is given to rise up for that victory and start writing, start declaring, start telling people. Let the world know that that is where our victory is. That is where our victory is. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. The cross, our victory. But the victory doesn't come when we are just sitting. But it's only when we rise up. There's a hymn that says, Rise up, O men of God, and have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and strength to serve the king of kings. One of the stanzas will tell you that you should rise. The church is looking up to you. Her strength is unequal to the task. Rise up, O oh men, if we are to conquer this world and let the world accept God as the savior, we must rise up. Today's reflection, I'm here to challenge you. Those of you who have been just been sitting and celebrating, we will just go to church and be happy to pay our tithe and life goes on. We have promotion and we are moving on. That is not the end of it. When we are talking about the cross, we are talking about an army. An army that must rise up and bring victory to that name. If we don't rise up, who will rise up? Wherever you are, Christian, I'm calling you. You are a soldier of God. When we talk about victory, we are talking about war. You are that soldier. Rise up. Rise up. Because we have the blood. We have the blood. And we will overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. So we are entering into a time of reflection, but we want to enter as soldiers. I'm challenging you. We are rising as a soldier. So we say, onward, Christian soldier. And it's MHB 822. We are rising. We are marching on to war. We are marching on to war. Marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banner go Christian soldiers marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. With the cross of Jesus, with the blood, let's lift it up as soldiers and move on. The second stanza. Satan's host that flee on them Christian soldiers on to victory Hell's foundation quiver Brothers, lift your voices Loud your anthem rise Onward Christian soldiers. Onward Christian soldiers. Marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus. Go The third stanza, like a mighty army. Moves the church of God. the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided. 
divided. We are not divided. All one body we. All one body. One in hope in doctrine. One in hope in doctrine. One in charity. One in charity. Onward Christian soldiers. Onward Christian soldiers. Marching us to war. The cross of Jesus going on before thee. We are marching on as Christians. We are marching on as God's people. He says, Crowns and thrones may perish, kingdoms rise and wane, but the church of Jesus constant will remain. Gates of hell will can never. Against that church prevail. We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Crowns and thrones may perish, kingdoms rise and win. But the church of Jesus, constant will remain. Gates of hell can never. Against that church prevail. We have Christ's own promise. And that cannot fail. Onward, Christian soldiers. The last stanza. Onward then, ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with ours your voices in the triumph song. Glory, loud and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages, men and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers. stanza onward then ye people we are inviting all of you join our happy throng blend with ours your voices in the triumph song glory loud and honor unto Christ the King this through countless ages, men and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war with the cross of Jesus. So we are going to enter into a time of reflection. I do not know the area in your life where the accuser of the brethren keeps accusing you day and night. I do not know the area in your life where he has misled you and has even brought chaos upon you. The truth remains, the facts remain, that you overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and we will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. As you reflect, I want you to go before the Lord. I want you to, at this moment, lift up your voice and speak against any deception that is contending with you. Any deception from the pit of hell that is contending. Your family's business, your children's life, your marriage, anything that is contrary to the will of God. Rise up as a soldier and let me see you. Let me see you speaking against it. Using the blood of Jesus, using the blood of Jesus, that in the authority in the name given to us, we resist the devil. Just reflect and just pray. In your reflection from the depth of your heart, just begin to speak to the issues. Speak to the issues. 
Speak to the issues. Speak to the issues. Wherever he has misled you and your family, he has even misled your husband and now he's not behaving as the man you married him. He has misled your child. It's not the child that you trained. Whatever it is, the enemy is misleading. Just lift your voice because you have that authority. You overcame him and we overcome him. Yes, we have already overcome the devil. And we are confirming it today. Appropriating the work on the cross. And declaring it through the power of the blood of Jesus. Just speak. Just speak. Just speak. Just speak. Just speak. Just speak. Any area in your life. Any area in your life. That you see satanic influence. Just speak. Just speak. This is one of the benefits for us as the children of God who have believed in the cross that because of his death, because of his blood, we are able. Just speak. Just speak. Just speak. In the name of Jesus. 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 Whatever the devil is attacking, Jesus says he does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whatever he has stolen, that accuser of the brethren, just speak. Because the authority is in your mouth. The Lord has given it to you. This very hour, speak. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anything rising against our family. Anything rising against our businesses. Anything rising against our health. That is taking away, that is stealing our joy, that is stealing our portion that the Lord has given us. Just speak. The blood is there. The blood of Jesus. Because of the death on the cross, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Whatever he has stolen, take it back. Whatever he wants to kill, resist him. The Bible says that we should resist the devil and he will flee. He has no authority over us because of the blood. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 will tell us that Christ overcame them. He threw them off and he made the public spectacle. He made the public show of him. He has overcome him through his death. Any area of satanic influence in the name of Jesus, we resist the devil's hand. We resist every satanic move in the name of Jesus. Rise up as a child of God. Rise up as a child of God. Rise up as a child of God. Any move in the world that is contrary to the will of God. Any group of people who come together to plan against the church. We are rising up as God's people, as God's army. We are resisting and destroying all the awake in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and fight for the church. Fight for the body of Christ. He said, I'll build my, my, my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The church will not die. We will triumph. By the reason of the blood of Jesus, the church will triumph. Lift up your voice and fight for the church. Fight for the church. Fight for the church. Fight for the church. In the name of Jesus. Fight for the body of Christ. Fight for the body of Christ. Any kind of attack against the church. We resist it in the mighty name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of stronghold and casting down anything that rises against God's thoughts. Any imagination that is contrary to the will of God, 
resist it. And let the blood of Jesus be the mark over every believer. In this trying moment, some people's faith are being attacked. They are believing our Lord Jesus Christ is waning. But as the soldiers of God, we rise up with the blood of Jesus in our hand and marking the children of God that none of them shall lose their faith. In the name of Jesus, a battle for Christians who are weak. Battle for believers whose faith is being attacked. Some of them are the verge of giving up. This is our authority. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb. Any child of God is sealed with the blood. In the name of Jesus. Bring our nation before the Lord. Use the blood of Jesus at every corner, all our ports, all our borders. The blood of the Lamb will cover us a nation. COVID-19 will not destroy us. In fact, COVID-19 will be our testimony because of the blood of Jesus. We will overcome it. We will overcome it because of the blood of the Lamb. We will overcome it. Listen to what the Apostle Peter said, he said, he took away our sins and took away our sicknesses and nailed them on the cross. On the cross where the blood flowed down. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. In the name of Jesus, pray for nation Ghana. Intercede. Apply the blood of Jesus. Every corner at our hospitals, at our homes, in public places, in buses, in our marketplaces. Plead the blood of Jesus. That blood never loses its power. It never loses its power. It never loses its power. In the name of Jesus. Let the blood be the mark. And pray for all nations. That COVID-19 will not wipe us. But it will be a testimony. The Lord shall deliver us. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wherever you are, join me. And let us thank God. Father, we bless your name. This has been a wonderful week. You have told us the truth. You have shown us the way to salvation. And you have given us victory over all our trials and temptation. And over the devil and the forces of darkness. We bless you and we thank you. And we step out there in that full assurance of the power in the blood of Jesus. We thank you as a church and we thank you for your promise that you will preserve us that when the time duly comes we will gather once again before you and we will celebrate your goodness. May your name be praised now and always. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Church, all too soon Easter reflection is coming to an end. In my heart, I wish we could continue. We could have more days. But this is what the Lord wants us to do. And we have done just that. Tomorrow, Friday morning from 8.30, as a church, we will continue with our live stream. We will have the Good Friday service and stream it live. All members stay at home. It's those who have some duty to perform who will come around 
and share the gospel and encourage you wherever you are. For that reason, Friday evening, our usual prayer service meeting will not be held. The live streaming of that prayer meeting will not be. But rather on Sunday morning, when we will return to the presence of the Lord with our handkerchiefs celebrating the resurrection, be present with us 8.30 on Sunday as well as we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. Oh Jesus. What ya way? You are said that in Tuntum and the Ayay, the Sawuku told and fat out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Why, oh, Hallelujah. We're Jim Kunima. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, we're the Kunima. Yes, you are one for and come. Yeah, I do. So I say, yeah, I'm a here at the Yeah.